Hey guys, what's going on? Mel Milton here, and in today's video, I'm going to go over a couple of tips and tricks of things that have helped me to better understand and utilize the gradient map feature inside of Clip Studio Paint. Now, there are other programs that have this feature, such as Photoshop. Um, they may work a little bit different, have some subtle differences to them, but for the most part, they'll yield you the same results. So if you want to follow along with those programs, by all means, um, I will just be showcasing Clip Studio Paints a little bit more in depth as it's the one that I use the most. So with that said, let's get started. Color is a scary thing. Color still messes me up, you know, keeps me up at night. Much more so when I first started my art journey, as color just seemed like this magical thing, and the people who understood color, it was I would never attain that kind of knowledge because uh, you know it was just way over my head. Over time, um, even, even though I kept fumbling through it and just like I, I really wanted to understand it, I, I saw a few um, places where uh, people were talking about tone like tone was the thing that you really wanted you know if you if you nailed your tones that the color would fall into place I started doing tone studies it, it helped simplify you know the thought of you know everything's everything that you're looking at is really light we're working our way from light to dark what, what what's in the light is what you can see and what's in the dark is the stuff that's you know harder and harder to see I keep most of the concepts that I learned to threes. So say like shapes, small, medium to large, foreground, middle ground, background. With tone, I try to keep it within the highlight, mid-tone, and shadows. Now the reasoning for this is that I can better keep track of where I'm at in my process by simplifying it to these things. So here I've simplified it and broke it down into highlight, mid-tone, and shadow, the, you know, the, the threes that I was talking about earlier. And so if you notice, I didn't make my shadow uh, color black and I didn't make my highlight color white. Let me go ahead and um, illustrate that. So here I have a sphere that's colored with the mid-tone. And you know, I will uh, go ahead and sample the shadow. Let me make the shadow side. Come up with my highlight. All right. I'm going to punch that up a little bit more. All right. So there's my sphere. You know, and by having those three tones, you know, I've given that that circle form where I would use the white and the black. Uh, would be in, in two specific areas. I would add that um, specular highlight, you know, and again, this is where I would use the uh, the white, right? I would use the white and that specular highlight, right? And down here, I would use the, the black for the occlusion, you know, that area that light cannot reach is where I would use that black. And by using it specifically like that, you know, it brings that pop. It brings that contrast that we're looking for in our tones. So that's why, you know, something that I keep in mind, not going all the way to black and not going all the way to white, you know, gives me a, a bit of that wiggle room. So like if I, you know, turn that on and off, if you look at those areas, how that just punches it up, you know, by having, because now I've added that, you know, that that black and white uh, more sparingly and expanding on that uh, a little further before we dive right into the uh, gradient map um, I will break down those tones a little bit further um, and adding uh, transitional breakdown this to me these areas would be the areas that I would have the ability to make extra decisions when choosing my colors, right? In these two areas, you'd have the ability to, you know, say, okay, I, I want that color to be warmer or cooler or more saturated or less saturated. And it's in these two spots. And the reason why I break it down to have these five spots, when I go into the gradient map, um, it's easier to be able to see where those um, transitional places are. 
Another thing that I try to keep in mind is um, having one favor over the other. So, and, and this is just a general kind of thinking in my mind. When I'm looking at the image that I'm uh, wanting to work on, um, is it going to be mostly dark or is it going to be mostly light? So, I'm, so an example of that part is uh, like this Marilyn Monroe uh, study I did a couple of weeks ago. If I were to simplify this um, and break it down into just simple colors, right? Okay, and so here's another uh, portrait that I had done where it's reversed, right? So majority of everything within the container favors more of a darker tone. Nailing your tones right, you know, and getting them really uh, solid. This is why, um, you know, like I'll open up, I will add this gradient map, right? Just so that I can show you, um, we can change those colors. And as long as the colors fall within those tones, then it'll still read. So I'm going to take this rainbow, rainbow color, right? Now, if we look at how it affected the tone, you know, we don't have any gradients in this, you know, so as we step through the colors. But with this, um, with this tone, you know, it still reads. Now, if I, if I switch to another one, it still reads, right? Because this blue is still holding the tone of the darker color, right? And so the darker part of that black and white and all the lighter parts, you know, the color, as long as the color is falling within that tone, you know, it still works, right? So, you know, the light to dark is still working. And, you know, like I said, this green is falling under that darker tone as long as and now if that green were to go brighter then it wouldn't it, it wouldn't hold the same so like if I change this right we go to we go to right we go to a different where we're not holding the tones right so this tone now has changed from the lighter part and has gotten darker so it starts to you know, erode the readability of that by by having the tones switch. And let me add a black and white to this. So I'll fill the, so just so I can check my tones, I'll fill this with white. All right, and then I'll set this to color. Now, if we look at our tones in comparison to how they were before, you know, now we got things that aren't, aren't as distinct. So this is why um, just taking a time to look at your tones before you even bring it into, you know, and see how color uh, can be affected and how to keep in mind what your, uh, what tone your colors are, you know. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, reference or going out in real life and looking and starting to go, um, you know, what is that color? Not not just, just the color, but, you know, how dark is that color? Work your way into, is it cooler or warmer? And then what's the contrast to the color next to it? You know, so it's, it's just giving you the ability to analyze. And that's what I love about this tool because it gives me that ability to analyze what I'm, uh, what I'm, you know, my tone studies. All right, so with the primer out of the way, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into how I create a, a gradient map tone. Here's this piece that I'd worked on a couple of weeks ago. And uh, again, it was just a tone study. So I figured I will start with this as my base. First thing I'm thinking, I'm just gonna color the skin. So what I'll do is, is I'll go into new correction layer, gradient map. When I'm creating my map, my gradient, again, I will start in the middle. That's my local, right? And then I'll add the additional two to the sides just to e equal that out so okay so the first color I'm gonna think of you know let's go with the um, her, her local value color and I will grab let's see okay so I got her local value in her highlights. I'll probably make it a warm highlight. 
Again, I'm not going to go all the way to white. I'll probably leave it a little desaturated. Where the black is. And I will probably go cooler with that one. With my, all right. So, purple, you know, will be more of a... Uh, cooler, but I'm going to go a little bit more saturated. So then when I transition from there, from the one point to the next, I'll keep that in mind. So seeing as I'm moving down cooler, again, We're moving our way to that yellow color. All right. So again, I'm just working on the skin tones here. Now I'm pushing everything up because her tonal range is a little bit more um, in my mind, it's a little bit more uh, in the lighter area, so I'm favoring the lighter side of this. All right. Cool thing about is mixing rates. So um, I can use check this mixing rate, right? And depending on how much. Uh, transition from one color to next or one tone to the next is I can adjust this to um, shorten or lengthen uh, how far a gradient will will go so you know because there's a whole lot in the shadows but I don't I don't need all of that so if I grab the shadow you know I could uh, bump back you know so that I ease into that darker area And again, once I get those things, if as necessary, I will go ahead and um, add other spots, right? So here I can push that purple that I was looking at going into the shadows, uh, cool that off a little bit. And again, this is just personal choices. Just for an example, I'm just kind of going over what I'm thinking as I do this. And I'm feeling pretty good with how that looks. And I know it might seem a little bit strong. So I'll go ahead and okay that one. Now I will set this to color. All right. And seeing as I only wanted in the skin tone area, I will go to the mask, delete it, take my lasso fill. And now it's just going to fill anything that I, it doesn't matter what color I'm using whatever fills will show through. And then if I want to soften up like by her hair, um, get the soft hair brush and I will Put that to a transparent color i can soften that edge up where that is oh you know so things like the eyes you know 
I'll keep on that transparent color. Like that. And then um, I will work on the, you know, saturation. I'll drop the opacity of this down so that um, there's a hint of color, right? So then if I ever need to change this, you know, it's not it's not on the actual layer. Like I could have, you know, just went into edit and did a gradient map that way. But this way adding a gradient, you know, map layer doesn't affect the actual tone. So if I need to switch things up, it's already there. And again, you would take other things and, you know, work other other areas, but that's how I use it. That's how I would build a tone you know for one spot and then just repeat the process for the others and another use for the gradient map you could also use it to uh, color grade uh, you know an image that you already have so for instance uh, change the feel of, of her skin tone I would uh, duplicate the tonal set that uh, on top of the rest of it um, I would go um, add another gradient map, but this gradient map, I'm just going to put it on top of this, right? Let's do this thermology one just for the fun of it. Okay. Do something like this. There's just a lot of little different colors in there. So now what I can do is I can, you know, with that gradient map, you know, overlay it and change the tints, you know, use different, you know, multiply. Let's go with the, you know, we add that color, you know, kind of get that. Um, Instagram effect with it and then if you wanted to just only have it you know on the uh, on the skin tone itself uh, hold control click the mask there's your selection control shift I it inverts that selection and you just delete everything else out and so there's how you could you know add a, some color grade to your already existing images with the um, gradient map feature well there you have it that's pretty much insights to what i'm thinking when uh, using the gradient map inside of clip studio uh, if you made it this far i'm truly humbled if you found any information in this helpful leave it a thumbs up um, if you're new to the channel uh, consider subscribing hit that bell notification so that as soon as that next one rolls out that you're ready for it what kind of challenges did you have um, with color and tone is there anything that you thought um, would be better expanded upon in another video uh, leave those things in the comments below uh, i'm grateful to be a part of your world i wish you all the best till the next one keep on keeping on